Hey, Jen, how are you? I'm great. How are you, Allison? I'm well. Greetings from New York City. Well, and howdy from Nashville. <laughs> how How is life in Nashville recently? Uh, you know, I think we're faring better than, than many other places of the world. So I'm grateful. I've got really good friends in San Francisco that I've been in touch with all day. And um, the world is a crazy place right now. Have you been hunkered down in your house mostly in Nashville? We have been pretty quiet. Um, we normally love to travel, and um, obviously we have not been doing that. We've been trying to stay close to home, and uh, school's just sort of kicked back in. So we're trying to find our new routine and, um, you know, make it as normal as we can. Sure, sure. Well, I know you've got little ones, so juggling the, uh, the homeschooling for the past couple of months and uh, work as well has got to be a juggling act. I'm pretty lucky. So my little guy is now 15. Um, and he's actually at school. They've started back full time. So um, I'm Amazing. exceptionally grateful for that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just trying to get back into the, you know, swing of work and, and all those things. So I'm so excited to be getting a little tour of your sunroom in just a few minutes. Um, but before that, I, I read that you're always tweaking and moving a pillow around and doing a project here or there. Have you taken on any design projects while kind of under quarantine? Of course. I think as everybody has, I think all of this extra time at home um, has really reminded us of all the things that, that need to happen in our own spaces. So it's been actually really so nice to be at home and have that extra time. We're tackling, um, there are a couple of outdoor spaces that have been on my list forever. And we've been in the house about five years now, but we did, it's an old 1920s home. And we did sort of a ground up renovation when we moved in. Um, and so obviously, you know, I think for us, it, it, we've been slow to get the layers and wallpaper and art and all of those things fine tuned. So this extra time at home has allowed me, I've tackled some wallpaper that I've been waiting to do. Um, oh, and a couple bigger you. things that are in process. Yep. So it's good. It's good. So you're always designing for other people, but do you love also designing your own home? I mean, I've seen pictures. It's absolutely stunning. Oh, you're very kind. Um, you know, we actually do so many different things. You know, interior design is sort of where we started and home renovation, but we've really morphed the focus of our brand um, much more into sort of lifestyle, product development. We're doing um, a collaboration with Anthropology that launches in January, which should be really fun. Um, but I think, you know, most recently, all of our time has been really dedicated to the launch of PNP Creative Club, um, which is a super fun platform and way for creatives to connect and learn from one another. And it's something we've had in the works actually pre all of this sort of um, craziness of the world and was intended to be um, event based where we traveled together and connected. And obviously that's not just not an option right now. And so we've morphed that into this really exciting online platform way to connect. And ultimately there will be travel and that sort sure. of interaction, but it's been, um, it's, that's been such like an exciting project to sort of undertake during this, this time that we've had, you know, being based out of our house. Um, of course, yes, there are always design projects as somebody who loves, um, you know, interiors, and I love fashion and all of those things. I think that sort of touches every aspect of my life. So there's always a project happening at home. So the, the, the creative club that's starting when that is moves from virtual to in person. Mm -hmm. um, it's a way to just bring people together who share sort of similar minded ideals about design to look to be inspired by each other. Absolutely. But, and also to learn from one another. And really, I think I feel so fortunate. I have a background in retail. Um, I spent about 15 years, you know, in, a, in many different um, 
large box retailers. So from Old Navy and Gap and Victoria's Secret and The Body Shop. And that sort of retail experience, I think I learned so much in terms of marketing and the business side, um, developing people, staffing, sort of all of those things that are so important when you're launching your own business. And so I think that really prepared me to sort of morph into interiors. And ultimately what I found is, you know, I think in the interiors world, there's no guidebook. Nobody teaches yeah. you how to do this. You know, nobody explains um, that you need an accountant or the tax side or how you market it or how you build a team, sort of any of those things. And I found that that sort of information sharing was missing. And so, you know, I think very authentically through our Instagram and our blog, people asked us questions. They wanted to sort of understand more about how we sort of morph our own business. Um, and I think for me, P&P Creative Club is really the ability to sort of share all of that knowledge. Um, I think it's so important not to keep that a secret. You know, I think sure. women supporting other women, there is nothing more valuable than that. And so um, this platform is sort of many faceted. It is social for sure. It's a connector of creative women. So that they have um, like-minded people to bounce ideas off of and here's a problem I'm having or I'm looking for a graphic designer I'm trying to build a website or I want to do this collaboration or I'm trying to expand my team it's really um, it's a resource for all of those things both in conversation and support but um, I think also very tangible sort of resources sure. as well and, and there's creative content that we share weekly. You know, I think I have been so fortunate in this industry to be connected to amazingly smart women who have launched incredible brands and have great careers. And to sort of tap into them um, via our platform has been great. So once a month we sit down and I do a great Zoom call, much like this. So the business side for you, is that something that you brought from your prior career in retail or did you kind of have to learn as you were starting your own company? You know, I think um, everything that I've done, there's been a bit of learning on the fly. I do feel really fortunate. You know, I talk about this quite often that I feel like my time at the Gap was sort of a Harvard MBA in retail. And so there's so experience that I have been able to sort of carry over into what we do. Um, of course, there's there's lots to learn on the fly. I mean, I think, you know, Instagram is a great example. That sort of wasn't a platform and all of a sudden it arrived and figuring out, you know, how you use that, how you leverage that. Um, for me, that's been so much fun. And I, I see that as um, again, a connector with like-minded people. And, and to me, that has been the power of Instagram. Um, I have been able to meet, you know, amazingly smart women across the world. And it sort of starts out in this social way and it, and it morphs. And that sort of ability to leverage one another, to be introduced, you know, by connections you have, to learn from those people, that to me is incredibly powerful. And I realized, you know, I've had a lot of good, good fortune in those connections. And I want to be able to sort of share that, share those um, relationships. Yeah, giving back. Yeah, I mean, and, and I do think, you know, I, so much of this was sparked for me by, I have a very close knit group of um, creative women that I meet with, you know, every couple of weeks, my dearest friends, and we spend so much time, you know, sort of bouncing ideas off of one another and sharing information and you know, we all do different things. I have a friend who's, an, you know, two friends that are artists and another friend who is a makeup artist, but there's a creative continuity among all of those things. And, you know, the ability to bounce ideas off of one another and share learnings um, has been incredibly powerful and such um, an impact on my life and what my business is. And I realized that there are so many people that don't have that. And that was, you know, again, you know, one of the reasons that we launched Creative Club is that there are women across the U.S. that have not found that community of women. And especially as it relates to, you know, work and what inspires you. And, you know, I think there are also so many women that are morphing careers that, you know, may not have started in a creative place and they're ready to sort of take that leap. So it's really a connector of, of all of those different things. 
Well, and you'll probably hopefully share with them some of your secrets. Um, yeah, always. Your style secrets. So you, um, I read, well, and I know, are a collector and have a lot of things. And I feel like a kindred spirit with you in that sense because I pack so much stuff into our New York City apartment. How do you, or do you have any tricks on how to make sure collecting doesn't become clutter? Yeah, why don't we, this is a perfect pause for me to turn this around. Turn and it around. Talk a little bit about the space. Okay, hold perfect. on. I'm not, not the most tech savvy. One second. There you go. Okay. So we are right now in what I call my sunroom. Um, and it's our sunroom slash bar. As I said, it's a 1920s home. And this is actually a very small addition um, that the, we bought the home from the estate of the original homeowner. And so his, his family owned the house. He grew up here and he ultimately lived here with his mom. And so he built this little extra room onto the end of the house. It's only accessible through these doors right here. And um, so it was a card room for his mom when his mom had his girl, her girlfriends over and he did not want them to walk through the house. <laughs> he was oh very meticulous. So you would park out back and then they would walk into this little room. So I actually, you know, when we renovated the house, we really considered, um, should we open it up to the main house? And for the layout of our floor plan, it just didn't make sense. And I can't say enough how thrilled I am that we left it private. This is the space that I actually meet my girlfriends in, you know, almost weekly to sit and sort of creatively brainstorm. Like a girl's um, clubhouse. To touch, it is our girl's clubhouse. <laughs> um, and I think, you know, to touch on your question, which was really around collecting, I am a collector. Um, and I think of myself as sort of a curated collector. My husband is much more modern, my, likes a much more pared down space, and he's definitely had an influence on me. So although I still collect, I feel like it's definitely sort of a cleaned up version of that. Um, but I'll talk a little bit about art collecting. You know, I think I love art and I cover my walls throughout the, our house are really covered with art collections. And um, what you see here is this really great series that I bought at a thrift store that I love in Nashville of these Italian um, etchings of prints. And I had them framed at our local framer. But what I really love about this is there, this collection is covering every single wall. So it's, oh, you know, cool. I, I think it's an example of, um, I think abundance, but done in a very clean way. Um, and I think that, you know, absolutely speaks to sort of my aesthetic. Um, and I you think picked kind of a neutral frame. We did. I really wanted this almost to just add texture to the walls. Mm. And, and then, of course, I, ha I love a stripe. I love a wallpaper. So this is a little pharaoh and ball um, stripe ceiling detail. Oh, what a fabulous idea to give it more texture on yeah, top. Just, I mean, so it gives you wouldn't think. Absolutely. And the space itself is actually, you know, this, it's a, it's brick. You can see it's brick. Um, and, you know, a wood paneling detail. And we just came and painted the whole thing white, which really makes it so much lighter um, and brighter. So that was sort of an easy update. Um, and then, you know, I would say also in terms of collections, it's just like how you wrangle things. Um, I picked up this really great um, little sort of Chippendale uh shelf and we've used that to really hold our vintage barware collection um so i'm always sort of adding to that and have stashes of vintage um glasses everywhere um, and it's colored uh, colored glass on the top it's old um like reds oh please. yes yep um, so that's been really, these are my favorite with this, like the sweetest little hand painted um, stars and stripes, which is really fun. But, you know, I think especially during quarantine, you know, this idea of um, spending more time, you know, setting a table or making a cocktail in the evening um, with a pretty glass. I think there's definitely a nod back towards those things that there used to be more time to do. Um, so it's been fun to sort of experience that, you know, during this, this time at home. Have you had a go-to cocktail? 
Uh, my husband is quite the cocktail maker and um, he, anything like he loves a fresh squeezed, you know, margarita with fresh lime. I will show you, I'm about to enjoy um, a click after this, which is my favorite Bahamian um, beer. So that's sort of, that's my drink of choice lately. That's your I just, treat after this. I, yes, and I pretend that I'm vacationing in Bahamas when I sit in here. So it, it's a nod back to that. Oh, I want to get back to travel in a second, but these beautiful pillows that you have, you are so good about mixing patterns and colors. How do you do that so effortlessly so that it all looks cohesive? So I'll say one, I am a lover of pattern and, I, and I'm a firm believer in buying the things that you love and you'll find a place for them. I'm, to be like so transparent, I don't think anything in this room had a plan or was imagined to um, you know, end up in the same place. I bought the pieces because I love them. And I will say this room for me, the sort of jumping off point is this great vintage screen that I picked up just at a local junk store for nothing. It's one of my favorite pieces and it's really set the tone for the space in terms of color palette. And I always say that a piece of art or wallpaper or textile that sort of has multicolors is a great jumping off point for a space because it gives you a palette to work with. So that's really allowed me, you know, I knew that um, I wanted this to be a pretty classic sort of blue and white space. Um, the, the, this fabric is my dear friend Marty Sykes collaboration with Schumacher. And I really just love the idea of one hero pattern. So we use that on the Roman shades and it's really most of the pillows. And then of course, pattern loving me, you know, found a couple of other hand blocked prints that I decided I, I really loved in the mix. So all sort of tonal. And then, you know, this great um, Indian hand blocked blanket is a vintage piece and you know always for me I love to mix in vintage treasures that add personality to the space and um, and this is an example we're actually um, doing something similar for our creative club members so our bestie box part of what we do um, is that there's a level that you get a gift box every month and so the things that we love we're really sort of curating those for our members as well so that is the inspiration behind an upcoming um, gift oh that's exciting yeah so it should be really fun so well, yes lots of pattern lots of um, mixing of patterns. And, and I also think it's very much about playing with scale. You know, I think a good formula is I love, I love something organic, like a floral, and then a mix of something more graphic with it. And obviously, you can see these, the scale of these mixes might really nicely. So something that's more pattern heavy paired next to something that has a bit more open space to it is always a good rule. And then you're always so great too about adding pops of color because I know and I read that your motto is color makes us happy. So you've, you had those color for, pops. Yeah, at least for me, color really brings me joy. Um, and I think, you know, creating a home that personally brings you joy is sort of one of the most important things that you can do. It Your house needs to speak to you and I think really represent um, who you are in your style. And so it should please you, you know, and I know for me, for example, I really do love living with bright, clean white walls. I like that feeling of light that it gives. Um, but I, I also know that I love to be surrounded by art. You know, for me, um, the memory of what flea market I pick something up or whenever we travel, art is usually what comes home on the plane with us. And I love to be able to look up at the walls and really remember, you know, where something's from and sort of um, what that day was. It's a visual sort of like photo um, of that experience. And, and I, I love that visual memory. Well, speaking of trips, what is the trip you are most looking forward to taking uh, once you can go anywhere you want in the world? Hmm. Um, India has been on the top of my list for a very long time, obviously, because I think the color and pattern um, is so, so beyond inspiring. Indian artwork has always been really inspiring to me. So um, I, I, that has been on our list for quite a while. 
You'll um, love and it. I, I went do. there and it was like totally life changing. Just well, I, I, I'll send you my itinerary. I mean, the colors, and the patterns, and the food, and the people. I mean, it just totally changed my world, and I yeah. loved it. Yeah. Well, I can't say enough. Um, I'm I'm such a believer that travel and the inspiration um, around that as a creative, there is nothing that is more fulfilling than that. And I know it has been so, so hard for all of us that are such visual people <laughs> to not sure. be out about and not be seeing those things that we find really inspiring. And I think more than ever, you know, picking up books and magazines again, I feel like that has become a source of inspiration that I've, I've gone back to because I, I can't be out and about. Um, and then I would say Instagram, like virtually, I still, you know, I'm living vicariously through, all, you know, photo um, of people's travels that, that pop up and, and even looking through our own photos, you know, and remembering that. And, right. Uh, yeah, and starting to curate what the next trip is going to be. As you said, we have time to plan now. And um, I think we all need that something hopeful to look forward to. Well, Jen, this has been such a treat to get a little peek inside of your world and in your sunroom. Is this where you've been spending a lot of time? A lot of time. Um, you know, it's it's funny. My my husband and I were everybody's working from home now, so there's lots of you know, like all of us morphing different places into the house. But you know, I think especially when we're working from home, it's so important to sort of experience the different areas of your house because um, it's it's you know you have to get out of that same space. I was getting yeah. stuck at like sitting at our kitchen island, and I reminded myself there were many other places in the house that I could go sit. And work it, from it helps Just you rediscover you your own home it does and it, it it makes you make that very long list of all the things that you need to tackle so i've been going room to room making my list of what's not finished and um and what still needs a, a, a little work well before we go i have to ask the red lips are fabulous when You're did this sweet. become your trademark you know, I, that's hard to say. I, I have worn a, like a bold lip for a very long time. Um, and red is definitely my signature color. It's our brand color. It's my nail color. Nails. I mean, I love a really happy poppy red. And I will say, I like, I don't feel like myself until I have a red lip. So the whole mask thing has been <laughs> really, really hard. <laughs> Well, I love it. It looks wonderful. And your brand is just so happy and positive. And I'm excited for the PNP Creative Club and all that you're offering to people out there. I mean, people are looking for a lifeline of creativity. So I think it's going to be so exciting. Oh, well, we appreciate that. And this was so much fun. Um, I'm, I'm like eyeing all of your fabulous artwork in the background. So we're going to need a home tour of yours. I'll do another home tour. I'm the same way. I just collect stuff wherever yeah. I go, whether yeah. or not it's from India or the street. I've, I've found artwork in Tribeca that I've like yeah. carted onto the subway and brought right. home. People will say, nothing you better. Get that? Yeah. And I say, I just found it on the street. Yeah. And it's those things with stories like that, to me, that is like, those are the treasures, the things that are very personal to you. Um, you know, it's so much more powerful than the most expensive thing that you probably own. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree. The story is what's so powerful about it and where yeah. it came from, because that's what Absolutely. people are really most interested in. It is. It's that connection. It's that connection. I couldn't agree more. Well, Jen, go have your special drink. It's thank cocktail you. hour, and uh, <laughs> thank you for, for joining, and everybody, thank you for watching. Cheers. It was really fun. Thanks, Allison. So fun. Bye, Jen. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.